Hey guys, this is Sean Sandridge. I am back. I am back with another video and I am late with a video. So I'm going to be doing the review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta season what nine episode 23 the reunion part three so i have been gone for a minute i will tell you at the end of this video what has been going on with me uh but uh you know i did not review episode uh, part two part two was booty and part three was less booty than part two and part one so the final one is coming up on sunday and i just want to do my recap because it's not even going to be a long review. I know a lot of people have already reviewed it and I have also seen some of the reviews. So at this point, we're just going to have a conversation. So let's just get into it and then I'll get you updated about why I have not been on these YouTube streets. So of course we know that it opens with the men, Bob, Todd, and Peter. So we have Sweaty Bob and his, you know, uh, co-host his glistening slow you know so glow beard and he's asked about his comments that he made about Sheree and um you know how did he feel about it and he says he feels terrible about it and he apologizes to Sheree and um <clears throat> she accepts it but obviously she says that he's not where she's at now I know a lot of conversation has gone on about Bob and Sheree. You know, I don't really think that they were having a relationship because, of course, there was some backstory that Bob had his girlfriend on the Maui trip. However, addressing the domestic violence thing, the one thing I'm not going to do is challenge a woman saying that she had been abused because one I wasn't there and we all know that there are levels to abuse and we all know that a lot of women that you would may otherwise not think um, would take abuse actually have been a victim of abuse and just like nobody believed K Michelle had gotten beaten up by her ex and a lot of people didn't know that side about him. Um, and it wasn't until he had to go to court and do a deposition and put it on paper that he actually uh, abused K. Michelle. Uh, I think the same could hold true about Sheree and Bob. Um, the only thing is that, of course, a lot of people have seen a side of Sheree, the infamous who's going to check me boo, and, you know, the veins popping out of the neck, and she had no problems standing up against a man who was seemingly a lot bigger than her. So one would say, why would people believe that Sheree would take that? But again, just like people have said things about uh, Matt and Kenya, you know, people who we care about and who we have an intimate relationship with, um, they fall under different rules. Um, and what I mean is that when you are intimate with someone, you may not see it coming and a lot of people men and women have dealt with abuse from their partners and it's a it's 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 not so simple as people would like to think so I, i'm not going to make an opinion about about it other than the fact that i think it's best for sheree and bob to remain as parents and that they both sit down and have a, a discussion either together or privately one-on-one -on -one with their children about you know things that have happened um in the past and you know they're they're Cairo's an adult and he's been on the show and he's seen it and his and 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 their daughter is you know getting ready to graduate from high school I mean they're not babies and they ha should have uh, a candid conversation about what healthy relationships should look like and if they did not have one how to do that better so um then we go into Peter and Cynthia and addressing about the divorce, a divorce that really has not happened until now because it wasn't until after the taping was when uh, Cynthia just recently filed. So, but anyway, we're going with the plot line and talking about um, the divorce. And, you know, I, <laughs> since I've watched the show and have watched Peter, I like Peter. And, you know, Peter was toasty. Peter you know, had been sipping on on the brown liquor before he got on stage. You could tell if you've ever watched Peter on any of the episodes, especially when the guys get together, you know, they have their couple of shots. You know that he was pretty toasty. Um, and 
you know, I felt bad about the relationship and, um, you know, they, it was it was kind of doomed beforehand even about the wedding I mean that was even a storyline with Peter and Cynthia about their getting married and how you know her mom and sister were plotting against against them like how do you handle even people not wanting you to win in the beginning you know and Cynthia says that she doesn't handle stress well well you know I, I can understand that not everybody's built for all of the stress one that marriage cause can cause one and two reality tv on top of a marriage we all know that a lot of marriages do not survive uh the the stress and the the nitpicking of relationships and <clears throat> cynthia and peter were no different and they had a lot going against them and you know peter uh visibly so held a lot of animosity against Phaedra and and Portia because they were a contributing factor about bringing on a lot of of the the stuff and of course Brawa rolled the tape they didn't even apologize about what they may have caused Cynthia which you know the reason why Cynthia was also very upset she was upset about Nini you know uh, about making comments about Peter she was upset about uh, Portia and Phaedra talking about Peter um, at the reunion um, she was upset with Peter and that infamous tape which was the beginning of the last season you know her, her having to address it and of course then he moves away and is dealing with the stress financially so there was just a lot it's a lot to ask of someone and I remember when she was talking um, the last season and she was like I bought into the Peter Thomas dream meaning that she he sold her because he's a salesman and she he sold her this dream about what it was going to be like to be with Peter Thomas well when it's high it's high and when it's low we'll make it through that's the way Peter is and if you if you with someone who has that kind of spirit if you you know the truth of the matter is is that Cynthia needs a man who's got steady money, you know, a corporate man, you know, a hedge fund man, a man who's got long money, who is not, you know, he is just living the dream and he just wants someone to live the dream with him. You know, he doesn't have anything to prove. He's not a hustler. He's already, he's already made his thing. You know, Cynthia needs a Stedman. Like Oprah has Stedman where 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 he's a, a a man that looks good good arm candy but has his own thing and he doesn't mind being in the background and wants cynthia to shine that is the kind of man that cynthia needs that doesn't care about being in the limelight that may not even show up on camera that might just be there to say hello and he is not even part of the fray of the housewives and i think for Cynthia, she has learned probably to play her relationships very close to the vest and be fiercely, fiercely protective. I think if anything she learned from the Real Housewives franchise and reality TV is that be prepared to have your relationship nitpick and only the strong survive. And since she is not made for that, um, she should just leave it well enough alone and not have someone who also wants to be in the limelight. I mean, Peter enjoyed being there. He's a businessman. He wanted to promote his businesses. And she needs someone who does not care about TV, doesn't care about, you know, what is all going on and is just happy that she's happy. So I felt bad for Peter because, you know, he, he did not want his marriage. And even to, towards to the end, he's like, I want her to be happy, even if it's not going to be me. But I ain't dead. And yeah, I'm out, I'm about, and I'm having a good time with someone I really like and that I was, I, my, my sex life was put on ice for a year and I ain't got to worry about it no more. And I ain't mad about you, Peter. You know, Cynthia is trying to live this dream about we're going to be friends. Well, I don't, everybody doesn't want to be friends. And Peter said, if I can't have all of her, I don't want none of her. And I can understand that. I can understand that. Not everybody can be friends with their with their spouses and and give that time. She wanted that to happen when she was done, and he he wasn't ready. So you gotta let him do his own thing, and y'all can be friendly later. But I ain't mad at Peter. So um, 
Okay, so the one thing I was so upset, you know, all the blogs were saying that he was emotional and he was crying on stage, which obviously did not happen. But what I was so upset because he was talking and like Kenya was like, Peter, stop. I just wanted to know, Peter, what did you not tell us? Because I felt like either he had too much liquor and he didn't have it under control or he was biting his tongue and he just left too soon. Like, I really wanted to know, Peter, what is it you did not tell us? Because I wanted him, look, he walked off stage and I was like, if you're going to do it, why didn't you just have an epic drop the mic, say what I'm going to say, and just walk out that would have been one classic peter and second that would have made this whole episode the bomb so that is what left me hanging like what did you not tell us because i felt like he wanted to tell us something and he didn't he you left us hanging peter and i'm not i i, I don't appreciate it all right so um shamia comes out looks beautiful love the blue love the dress and we find out, of course, you know, Peter and, I'm sorry, Portia and Phaed Phaedra and Shamir are not going to be the Three Musketeers. Um, Phaedra and Shamir don't like each other. And frankly, I don't think Portia likes Shamir. You know, 10 years of friendship and you couldn't give her the same sense of, I don't know, protection as you have with Phaedra. Something about it is fishy, and I want to know what it is. So write in the comments, because I want to know what is it between Phaedra and Portia do they have that we are missing? Like, I feel like, has Portia bought into some of the things that Phaedra has done? Because, you know, not too many people fail, fail, fare well with Phaedra. Like, has has Portia gone into some things like does she have some bones out there and Phaedra knows where the bones are buried and so they have this alliance I don't know like I feel like something's gonna happen and we're gonna find out that Portia is now on the on the hook for something and Phaedra is gonna come out clean because she always comes out clean listen to our tagline not everybody not everybody can have what they they can but i can that's her tagline it seems like she can get whatever she wants and she comes out smelling like a rose somehow let me t let me know what you think in the comments anyway so <clears throat> of course kenya was talking on her breath about you know sh the way you you did shamia dirty and then of course portia says so what did you say and then Kenya says, well, it's not what you what you said, is, it's not what you felt, it's what you did. And so then Portia can't handle Kenya, and she's never going to really win when it comes to the war of words. So the only thing she can tell her to do is shut up. Even though you you tried to call on the carpet about what you said, what she said, and then when she says it, you don't like it. And, of course, I hate this thing about apologies. I'm sorry for whatever you felt and whatever you said. Well, that, you know, that's so backhanded and so insincere it's like why did you apologize but Shamia loves Portia and values the 10 years and she accepts the apology and of course we know that Shamia and Phaedra don't like each other which is why Shamia should get a peach Shamia should get a peach just to see Phaedra squirm so <clears throat> um I do believe what Cynthia said about Portia and Phaedra will do whatever it takes to stand behind each other, even if it's not, not right. And I would say that could be true with friends that you don't call somebody out in public, but behind doors, you're like, girl, you know, that wasn't right. But when you go down in flames over someone who doesn't necessarily equally have your back, it, it, it makes you wonder what's going on between them. And no one is buying it. Now, if I'm friends with someone, I could care less what other people thought about our friendships, but because this is an ensemble cast and that everybody has to be out and about, that their relationship is very, very mm, suspect. suspect in a way that, you know, when you think of the relationship that Candy had with Phaedra, when things were going well, 
um, it still wasn't the same way like um, <laughs> Portia and uh, Phaedra. And I do believe Shamia when she says, you know, um, Phaedra is having the time of her life right now that she is probably, you know, she brings the youthful side out in Phaedra, you know, and auntie's having a good time. <laughs> I was like, go ahead, Shamia, that was funny. <laughs> That was real funny. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, she did not back down and I was here for it. Good for you, Shamia. Stand up for yourself because obviously Portia is not going to do it. So I wanted to know, why is it Andy was so um, intrigued asking Candy all these questions about who she's had, you know, relationships with? Like why he wants to know the cat facts on Candy? Did you find that intrusive? I mean, who does that? Anyway. I, it was just a, a question. And then I was thinking about, you know, Phaedra tried to prep Portia, you know, Phaedra being a, a, a lawyer. She tried to prep Portia and it, you know, when you prep people, like when you're going on a deposition, you can only do so much. But you could tell like she was trying to prep Portia because she knew that these questions were going to come up because she was trying to tap dance around and back and backpedal about her saying that she didn't say that she was a lesbian. And I just, and even Phaedra said it. She's like, well, Andy, I didn't say that Candy was a lesbian because, you know, the definition of a lesbian is if you are, you know, with women, uh, you know, exclusively. And um, a a Candy has not had just exclusive relationships with women. And I'm like, you know, it reminds me, you know, this is when, you know, I remember when I listened to uh, <laughs> Phaedra. All I could think of was when Clinton was in the hot seat with Monica Lewinsky. And it was right then where people forgot that Clinton is a lawyer. And Phaedra gave me so much Clinton tease because I remember when, you know, he was on, on the hot seat about his inappropriate behavior with Monica Lewinsky. And the infamous, the infamous question was when Clinton says, define what is is and everybody's like what and Phaedra was giving us the same type of Clinton tease like you know I didn't say that she was a lesbian that's not what I said so that's not what that meant like come on y'all come on like you were wasting my time and you're insult insulting my intelligence and I do not like it so I was with Todd because uh, he made that comment about the feds are still watching. And I was like, you go in, you go in. And okay, we're gonna boil down to this whole thing about, you know, Portia and Phaedra lying. Oh, and the, the only thing I really wanna touch on is like Portia, if you're gonna come back for this next season, you're gonna have to do something better. Now, when she was in Maui, and even two times in Maui, she said she's gonna blame it on the Henny. Cause first she said she didn't say it. She was at the the, the coffee shop talking about um, she's not in the teapots, short and stout, right? Then when she got called on the carpet with the uh, the text, she says, well, it must have been the Henny, right? And now she's at the reunion saying, well, it's beer goggles, and then she still said that it it wasn't it wasn't. I didn't proposition you. And all I could think of is like, Portia, you like those girls, you like those ladies, where you at the club, jamming, you know, catching the guy of an eye, you feeling it, you, you busy, you know, tonguing somebody down. The lights come up and you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? Or even worse, you go and you know, slipped in the bathroom, and undid whatever, and you come out, the lights come on, you're like, oh my God. And you wanna forget what you just did. And Portia, that's what you were given. You were given, I regret what I just said, and I'm gonna try to get around not admitting that I did it, when it's clear that you did. So just take the L, because it looks foolish. You're 35 years old, and you can't handle your liquor, you blame it on a henny, then you said beer goggles, and then you said it ain't had nothing, you're not attracted to her, 
when you had a very sober person saying what you did and you even had text messages you are not a good liar not a good liar and <clears throat> We haven't seen Phaedra win a case, so why are you trying to get prepped by her? I will not understand. Anyway, what I want to say, of course we know they left the, the, the stupid uh, episode with this soap opera style dun, 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 cliffhanger, which I was really mad about, but we're going to be stuck watching the last episode, so be it. And... I would say the MVP because <laughs> I was watching the MVP was Kenya Kenya was having the time of her life and listen <clears throat> I'm not team twirl I'm not team anybody but I really felt <clears throat> that Kenya felt like she was being uh, avenged because she was like you can see these girls for who they are and they're a bunch of liars anyway that's my review and I hope you enjoyed it so on to the end so I have been sick I have been really really sick now when I was last on camera I said I was on the men and I thought I was on the men but it just so happened I took a decline a decline that made me go back to the doctor and I just had to continue to finish the uh, antibiotics that they gave me and still on cough medicine because as you can tell I've had a bad cough but I mean I was so so sick unreal sick like still feeling like I had hurt myself um, still feeling winded I, I, I wasn't looking good and I, I, I was feeling worse and it just so happened that uh, I, <laughs> it is prom week. It's my daughter's prom tomorrow and I'm actually babysitting my granddaughter. And, <clears throat> but on Saturday, I had to go to Niles, Illinois. Sorry for the glare. I had to go to Niles, Illinois to pick up her dress. And that is an hour drive from where I live in Indiana. So um, I was uh, very sick. It was raining. The weather has not been great and I've been sick, but I do feel a lot better. I really do this time feel a lot better. And what I did this time is um, I took, a, took the week off on pretty much all activities. Um, all I did was go to work and I came home and I went to bed and I took my medicine and I slept a lot. I slept all weekend with the exception of taking my daughter to get her dress. And um, I stayed in the house and I did a lot of sleeping and a lot of taking the medication, that, that was it. And um, yeah, so that's all I've been doing. Um, but uh, catch me on my other social media platforms if you wanna find out what my daughter is wearing for prom, if you care. Um, we're really excited. She's very excited and uh, she's out getting her nails done. I think I'll take pictures of that and I will put them on IG and I will be taking pictures of sitting her off to prom, taking pictures and enjoying the day and um, enjoying my granddaughter. So yeah, so that is what I have been doing. And uh, for those of y'all that believe in the power of prayer, I believe in people doing intercessor. Um, you know, if y'all want to stand in for the gap for your girl and just pray for a uh, quick healing, I will greatly ap appreciate it. So thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I will talk to you soon. I will talk to you soon. Catch me on IG. Talk to you soon. Bye.